Best-selling author Sally Rooney has refused to sell the rights to her latest book to an Israeli publisher. It's a decision she made in solidarity with Palestine. The move has been welcomed by the boycott, divest and sanction movement, which pressures Israel to end apartheid. As is often the case in these situations, her standing up for Palestinian rights initially led to Sally Rooney being misrepresented and smeared. That's because it was initially reported in the pro-Israel press as being not a boycott of a country, Israel, but a boycott of a language, Hebrew. Based on a news article in Haaretz, the website Forward published an opinion piece titled Why Won't Sally Rooney Allow Her Latest Novel to Be Translated into Hebrew by an Israeli Publisher? That piece was then boosted by a number of high follower Twitter accounts. In the British commentariat, Ben Judah tweeted, depressing and unpleasant that Sally Rooney won't allow her new novel to be translated into Hebrew. That was quote tweeted by David Aronovich of The Times, who says, it's sad when your unfounded prejudices about someone turn out to be correct. A rather nasty response. And then Jonathan Greenblatt um, also tweeted this article. He is CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, which is uh, the biggest organization committed to fighting anti-Semitism in the United States. He said, shameful, hashtag Sally Rooney is embracing BDS's hateful tactics by refusing to publish her latest book in Hebrew. Literature is a space for opening minds, not closing them. She should reverse this decision and find constructive ways to promote co-existence. Um, you know, at first sight, you could think, they're reasonable. I'm in favor of BDS as a tool to apply pressure on Israel to end apartheid. I do, however, think that boycotting a language would be problematic. Languages don't belong to states or governments. They belong to cultures. And to ban your book being translated into Hebrew would therefore seem rather anti-Semitic. The problem here, though, that's not what Sally Rooney did. Within 24 hours of her being castigated online and the controversy appearing on news shows in the UK and the United States, Rooney made the following clarification. Earlier this year, the international campaign group Human Rights Watch published a report entitled A Threshold Crossed, Israeli Authorities and the Crimes of Apartheid and Persecution. That report, coming on the heels of a similarly damning report by Israel's most prominent human rights organization, Bet Salem, confirmed what Palestinian human rights groups have long been saying. Israel's system of racial domination and segregation against Palestinians meets the definition of apartheid under international law. She went on to say... The Hebrew language translation rights to my new novel are still available, and if I can find a way to sell these rights that is compliant with the BDS movement's institutional boycott guidelines, I will be very pleased and proud to do so. In the meantime, I would like to express once again my solidarity with the Palestinian people in their struggle for freedom, justice, and equality. Dahlia, this is a familiar story, isn't it? Absolutely. I think that you are totally right to point out the incredibly you know, unfair and, and misleading way in which this was already originally reported. You know, the headline, as you said, was that she wouldn't allow her book to be published in Hebrew, which she had already had her book translated into Hebrew. And it was clearly a way to, to undermine solidarity with Palestinian people by imposing slippage between Israel and the actions of the Israeli state with the entirety of Jewish culture and history, which is of course absurd. But by creating that slippage, they were able to kind of confuse what was actually quite a clear stance. I don't think you even needed her, her position, her, her clarif clarifying statement in order to understand that her gripe was with the fact that the publisher was not BDS compliant. It wasn't because of you know the, the inherent worth of, of translating a book into Hebrew. Um, but this is, you know, the literary establishment, and I find it so cringy when people sort of try and, and, and justify these kinds of things by saying, oh, you know, literature should be a space where minds are opened and things like literature cannot be an apolitical space. It cannot be a space where, you know, people, you, if you want to find a group of people that don't take strong positions on things, you really can't look towards fiction writers, particularly fiction writers whose work is so sort of so political, but not in an explicit way, like Sally Rooney's. This whole debacle really actually reminds me of uh, in the 1970s when the late John Berger 
won the Man Booker Prize and donated half of his winnings to the Black Panther Party and sort of used the, his speech. You know, I recommend everyone go and look up that speech. It was absolutely incredible. He used it to actually point out the colonial wealth upon which the Booker Prize Foundation was built. And, you know, he was similarly, hopefully this won't happen to Sally Rooney, but he was absolutely ravaged by so much of the literary, literary establishment and media establishment who, you know, found his politicizing of the pure art of literature to be so like improper and uncouth. And, you know, this is always the, the battle between the kind of liberal art institutions and the often more radical artists. But yeah, it just kind of really reminded me um, of, of that incident in history. And I'm really glad that like John Berger, uh, Sally Rooney stood stood fast in her, didn't allow her actions to be misrepresented and stood by what she originally made clear, which was this, which was that this was about being BDS compliant, which is absolutely her, her right to do so. Mm-hmm. 